Okay, welcome back to this section where we're going to talk about Kinesis Firehose and data streaming. So in the previous lecture, we discussed the basic input of data objects into S3. And we had a big problem with that because we couldn't concatenate our data. We were just getting single objects over and over, overwriting our data bucket file. So that wasn't super helpful for what we wanted to do. So one improvement in that direction is to use Amazon Firehose Kinesis data streaming. So what this is going to allow us to do, we'll keep concatenating the data by a predefined time interval or a predefined data limit interval. So where this is really helpful is if we want to have multiple time frames where we know, hey, every time at 12 o'clock I want to receive the next 10 minutes of objects coming in, data stream is perfect for that. It also has other uses outside of what we're going to be doing in this course, like maybe we want to put into Amazon Redshift, which is much more complicated. Or you can see from this diagram, they have it going directly through a Lambda function. That's probably to filter it more than just giving us every message. And then going into Amazon DB. Now when we cover Amazon Dynamo DB coming up really shortly here, we're not going to use a Lambda function to filter it. We just want all our raw data going into Amazon Dynamo DB. And there's a reason for that that I'll discuss. Now, for this lecture, we're not going to go through Dynamo. We're going to go directly into S3 as we did in the previous section on going to S3. However, we're going to designate it by a time managed frame. So we're going to be receiving every message from our embedded system MQTT JSON package into Kinesis data stream directly over here to our Amazon S3. So let's get to the next part where we'll set that up in our action panel. Okay, so we had a chance to look at what my Kinesis Firehose streaming is, how we can capture a data package over a given time length interval. So let's go ahead and set up an action that can accomplish that task. So we're going to create the action the same way we've gone before. We're going to go up here to create, and we'll call this My Kinesis Firehose. There's My Kinesis Fire so you know it's Firehose. Now there is just a Kinesis stream. It's a little bit more complicated where it's more configurable, but generally for IoT, this Kinesis Firehose as opposed to Kinesis stream is fine. It'll kind of just focus more in on what we want to do, create a window of data. And since we're not sending it to Redshift or Elasticsearch, we don't need some of those additional complications of the general Kinesis stream. That's where we're doing the Kinesis Firehose. And we're going to set up these attributes the same way we've done before. We want the whole JSON package. And the topic filter is going to be the same, depending on what your embedded device is publishing. Yours may be different than this. All right, so let's go ahead and add the action. Again, the one we're looking for is the Kinesis Stream, but not this one. We want the Firehose Kinesis Stream. And that'll simplify what we're trying to accomplish. Configure the action. And we can name our stream. I already have one in here, but we're going to create a new resource. So by creating a new resource, we're going to go over here to the Kinesis Firehose setup. And I already have an old stream in here, but obviously we're not going to utilize this one. We're going to create a new delivery system. And we're just going to name it. So we'll name it My K Fire. Name it whatever you want. <laughs> yeah, we want to do a direct put. This chooses the option to send records directly from a delivery stream. So we're not going to use a Kinesis stream again. That's a little more complicated to set up. And we can go on to the next. We don't need record transformation. We're going to transform our records ourselves. As I spoke about in the previous lecture introducing the topic, a Lambda function can be used for that record cleaning, selectivity, and transformation. We're going to transform this data later on. Normally, I like to have all my data into S3 and then transform it later. I don't like to clean it first. I like to clean it after. That way, I use S3 as the nexus point of storage, and then from there, I can clean records. If I clean it going into S3 or I clean it going into DynamoDB, per se, then I don't have access for, to those records later to look at them in raw format. So I'm going to keep that disabled for that reason. These are my options, and I spoke about Redshift and Elasticsearch previously. S3 is by far the simplest. That's just a raw data bucket, and we've seen that in the previous sections. And we're going to continue to use S3 throughout the course. So you get plenty of experience using S3. Super important Amazon service that you're going to use a lot. And this just tells it how it's go. If we want to transform record, we have ways to do that after we store it in S3. I don't want to do it before it goes into S3. Again, I just want that raw sensor data, JSON packets coming in, being published from our device 
going through the Kinesis Firehose stream into S3. So I'm going to choose an S3 bucket, but I'll go ahead and create a new bucket. And I'll just say my K bucket, and I'll call it 14. And I'll keep it in my region. Okay, I exceeded, so I'll have to rename it. So I'll call this bucket my K bucket. Again, I can't use capitals or hyphens or any weird characters. So just name it whatever you want. Create S3 bucket. Great. I'm not going to need a prefix on there. If you add a prefix, it just adds an extra folder extension, I believe. You can read what that does, but we don't need it for this. Let's move on. All right. As far as buffer size goes, this is pretty much overkill. Within the free tier, you're allowed a certain amount of size. This one actually may charge you a few cents. So go over that billing page to check, but to make sure we're not charged too much, let's just go for one megabyte and let's do it over 30 seconds. That's more, well, it has to be at least 60. So that means all the data, this is the smallest interval we can do. And one megabyte is more than enough for the JSON package we're sending. But over that one minute, every package that we send is gonna be captured by our stream and then saved into that S3 bucket that we designated. And I'm not gonna use any compression and I'm not gonna use any encryption. Again, I wanna keep this as easy as possible and then later, if you want to go back and play with it, you'll have that ability. I'm not going to have any error logging. That's just going to make an additional file in my S3 bucket that's going to point out errors and things like that. If you're doing a complicated application and you need to do some debugging, that could be a helpful utility. For this, I don't want it. And again, I'm going to let this use a typical IAM role. And you can go to that IAM section of AWS and review this role once it's created. So if you're not giving enough publishing access or inner application access, you can go ahead and add that to your role within the IAM console. But I'm not going to do that here. Now I'm just going to create a new role. I'm not going to use a previous role that I already created. So what that's going to do, it's going to send us to the IAM console to create this role. So I'm not going to use this. I'm going to create a new IAM role, and I'll just call it my Firehose. And that'll be our Firehose Kinesis stream role. Allow that. And it's going to provision that role for us. Now, if you want to check what that provisioning looks like, you can come over here to IAM services. and expand the one-click firehose role and look at the policy. This, this is a good way to check out what you're giving access to by default. Amazon has a default template and they're saying, here's what we expect everything you're gonna need for a typical firehose delivery stream role. And you can look through this, but this is gonna be sufficient for our purpose. So we don't need to examine that. We'll go ahead and go to next. And this is gonna have us kind of review everything that we've already done. It all looks good to me. So create delivery system. Awesome. That's all creative. And now that that's created, we can go back to our action and finish creating our action now that it's provisioned. Okay, that took a while, but it's all ready to go and you can review the permissions and how this works at any point. So let's go back to the AWS IoT console. And from the AWS IoT console, we can refresh this and it should be right there. There it is, my K fire. Not a very creative name. And do we want a separator for each of our records? Yeah, I think we can go for a comma separator. Again, we can separate each of our messages by one of these designated delimiters. So let's go for a comma. Add the action. And that's pretty much it. Now we're going to send a message from Amazon Kinesis Firehose. That's IoT device publishing that JSON package. To the Firehose is our pipeline into that S3 bucket we named like S3 bucket 14. So let's create that rule. And there it is. And we already know it's enabled by default, so I don't need to refresh the screen. We're going to go over to test. And of course, from what I'm using here, it's just that. My topic, get payload. Subscribe to this topic from the cloud. And now when I push the button on my embedded device at button zero, the flash or whatever button you're using or a timed interval, we get these messages. So starting from when we activated that first message, I'm just pushing an arbitrary number. Over the course of a minute, we'll get a number of messages. So I'll publish about eight messages over the next minute. All right, that's long enough. I don't know if it's been a complete minute, but let's go check out what that looks like in our bucket now that we've published those messages. So just go over here and open another instance and go to S3 and we'll look for our bucket and then we'll look for our messages and see what we're dealing with. So there's our bucket, my K bucket 14, not a very catchy name. And it's gonna put it in subfiles 218, subfile 13, that's just the date. 
So there it is. Again, I can't really open it. You're going to have to download it. And there we go. There's what it looks like as being sent from Firehose directly into S3. Now you see this is a little bit more useful format than we dealt previously from that export and direct to S3. The advantage over S3 is now we have multiple data objects concatenated into our bucket and we don't have that time frame problem like we have with just exporting where we only had what was showing on the screen. So if I was to open up the stream again, I can open the same bucket and keep sticking data into the same bucket. Of course, it'll be under a different file, but at least all those files will be in the same bucket. So we're getting closer to the solution that's really going to satisfy more of what we're trying to do with IoT. But this is certainly a step in the right direction, and it also demonstrates some additional functionality of the AWS IoT console for time-limited data streaming from the device to the AWS cloud into S3. So let's move on to the next topic.